Hello and welcome to News Now on iBrand TV. My name is Bennett Joseph and here are the stories we're reporting at this hour. The federal government in the earlier hours of today reiterated its commitment to lift more Nigerians out of poverty and unemployment this year. The manager of Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria in Ekiti, Mr. Tomi Ikuomola, gave the assurance at the closing of the agency's training for entrepreneurs. Mr. Ikuomola said the training was aimed at sensitizing Nigerians, especially the Ekiti state residents, on business opportunities in order to lift them out of poverty and unemployment. Thanking the government for the training, the participants said that it had exposed them to many opportunities that could make them employers of labor. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has written to his Chinese counterpart, President Xi Jinping, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral ties between Nigeria and the People's Republic of China. In his letter, the president expressed satisfaction with the progress made so far and thanked China for its support in defense matters and infrastructural development of Nigeria, among others. President Buhari also rejoiced with the Chinese across the world as they commenced celebrations marking the new Chinese Year of the Ox on February 12, 2021. Also, President Muhammad Buhari has called for a comprehensive reform of the structures and operations of the African Union to make it more functional in meeting targets, warning that the organization will become stale except it becomes more result-oriented. In an intervention at the ongoing two-day Tezifat Summit of the African Union held virtually, President Muhammad Buhari expressed appreciation for the support of heads of state and government of the African Union in the election of Ambassador Bankole Adeoye as Commissioner of Public Affairs, Peace and Security. Meanwhile, following the decision to reopen the Lekki toll gates by the judicial panel of inquiry set by the Lagos State Government to investigate the October 2020 Lekki shooting incident, Nigerian youth earlier today took to one of the microblogging sites Twitter calling for a fresh protest, insisting that justice must be done before the reopening of the toll gate. The call for the protest has led to the creation of hashtag Occupy Lekki toll gate, which has been trending on Twitter. And in business, Bitcoin hit a record high above $43,000 in the early hours of today after electric car maker Tesla invested $1.5 billion in the digital currency. Bitcoin hit $43,700 before cooling slightly to $42,300. The cryptocurrency is up around 50% since the start of the year. Tesla's announcement in a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission document is a sign of confidence in the cryptocurrency currency that regulators are concerned could be used for illegal transactions. And still in business, the Central Bank of Nigeria has expressed concerns over cryptocurrencies as channels for promoting illegal activities, among other risks. It said this in a statement regarding various comments and reactions following its recent reminder to deposit money banks to desist from transacting in and with entities dealing in cryptocurrencies. The CBN stated that the recent regulatory directive became necessary to protect the financial system and the generality of Nigerians, including the youth population, from the risk inherent in crypto assets which have escalated in recent times with their consequences for the integrity of the financial system and financial stability. And the upturn in the global oil prices last week has again brought to the fore marketers' concern over the non-implementation of the full deregulation of the downstream petroleum sector as the pump prices of petrol have been left unchanged for more than two months. Top officials of two major marketers' associations who spoke with journalists said the continued increase in oil prices had brought back petrol subsidy. Meanwhile, the sustained increase in global crude oil prices had pushed up the landing cost of imported petrol closer to the current pump prices of the product in Nigeria and appeared to have triggered a return to the petrol subsidy era. Four marketers had in December expected another upward adjustment of PMS prices to reflect the further rise in crude oil prices, which closed at $51.2 per barrel on December 31, 2020. And on the foreign scene, the Democratic Republic of Congo on Sunday announced a resurgence of the Ebola virus in its troubled east. 
after a woman had died of the disease just three months after the authorities declared the end of the country's previous outbreak. The woman is said to have died on February the 3rd after which a sample of her blood tested positive for Ebola, according to the Republic's Health Ministry. The Democratic Republic of Congo declared on November the 18th the end of its 11th Ebola outbreak, which claimed 55 lives out of 130 cases over nearly six months in the northwestern province of Equator. And in sports, the Qatari 2022 World Cup organizers have insisted that matches will be staged in stadiums operating at 100% of capacity, even as the global fight against the coronavirus drags on. In Tokyo, organizers of this year's rescheduled Olympics have insisted their tournament will go ahead, but infectious diseases experts question the safety of hosting it before the virus is comprehensively defeated. Meanwhile, Qatar is currently hosting the Club World Cup of regional champions as the country sees a spike in coronavirus cases and hospital admissions. And that wraps it up for us on News Now on iBrand TV. At this hour, for more news stories, visit our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and follow all of our social media platforms. I am Bennett Joseph and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.